Funmi Dasolu spends a lot of time thinking about her chronic pain. And now she's some big decisions to make. For me, it would be no more transfusions. I could come off a full weekly transfusion program, no more medication. I could go for a hike without thinking about, am I going to have a crisis? How is this going to affect me energy wise? I could play sports. I could meet up with friends. I think for me, it's just a level of freedom um, that I haven't yet experienced. For Funmi, the disease means regular blood transfusions. Sickle cells are crescent-shaped red blood cells. They don't live as long as healthy blood cells. The severity of pain is unimaginable. Like, literally, you can be, like, I'm talking to you now, I might seem fine, um, then, like, in the next five, ten minutes, like, the pain can start in one place and just, just spread all over your, bod your body. Um, so, literally, just, I would say, incapacitated, just not able to function, do, like, the simple, basic things, like, make food or go out, that sort of thing. Roughly 15,000 patients in the UK live with the disease, and today's a massive deal. A new therapy edits the gene in a patient's bone marrow stem cells so that the body produces healthy red blood cells. The treated cells then go back to the patient via infusion. It leaves people more or less symptom-free. A functional cure, that's the term medics are using. And how much is known about side effects? Well, the worst outcome is that you edit a so-called oncogene in some way and you activate a gene that might go on and cause cancer of some sort in the bone marrow. So that's been one of the worries that, that you know, the so-called off-target effects will end up causing a, a brand new problem. Despite the unknown, so many people are feeling hopeful. OK, Toby, can I get your first and last? <laughs> this is Channel 4 News' very own Toby Bakari, a producer who had sickle cell disease until he had a transplant. It's momentous because, you know, for the first time in a long time, there's a, a, a treatment that is going to be a, a game changer. I'm Toby, and I was diagnosed with sickle cell as a baby. But now, after receiving a life-changing bone marrow transplant, I don't have this disease anymore. Toby gave evidence to NICE, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, about stem cell treatment. Uh, this is a big day for you, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's a massive day. Um, I was really lucky. I had a, a sibling who was a match, um, but not everyone has that. You know, most people don't have that. So to people who don't have that, they now have the opportunity to have this cutting edge technology, um, this stem cell treatment that will effectively get rid of their sickle cell. The treatment is called Exocell and it uses Nobel Prize winning technology. But this isn't just about the science. It's also about deep inequalities in the healthcare system. It's about race. Sickle cell primarily affects black people. A parliamentary report in 2021 found racism to be a key factor in substandard care for patients, overt racism and systemic. We don't want to say one disease is more important than another, but some conditions which are rarer than sickle cell disease, say like haemophilia, have a huge number of very expensive treatments that have been developed and gene editing. And speaking of fairness, this NHS treatment will be limited to around 50 patients a year, but chosen how? There has to be some way in which, um, you know, patients are selected that is fair. And it could be that you could say the, you know, the sickest patients deserve it most in the sense that without it they're going to get ill very soon. Or it could be that maybe the better value is treating people who are currently well to keep them well in the future. And Gosh, I, yeah. Big decisions. Uh, yes. I think it will... I think in practice, you know, limiting it to, say, 50 patients a year is, is going to be very difficult. I think for me it's just that, like, freedom of actually I can just wake up and do what I want today. Funmi's still deciding whether or not to put her name forward for this treatment. And even then, her fate lies in the hands of a panel of experts in a hat with thousands of other patients.